season of no fear. What an emotional roller coaster. No regrets. Tickets punched to the national semifinals. You owned your gift, and it has led you here. Living in your wildest. Now is the time to ignite. Delivering wedding cows. Unleash everything you have in your heart. If I'm any other team at NCAA Championships, I'm scared of Utah. And propel yourself to new heights. You have thrived in competition. These are Teflon-coated, diamond-studded beasts. So you can do what you love. Fight for what you have earned. Exquisite! I just jumped out of my seat. And bring your dreams to life. Storybook ending. At the NCAA Women's Gymnastics Championship. Welcome to Fort Worth, Texas for the second semifinal of the 2024 Women's NCAA Gymnastics Championship. Special thanks to Emma Roberts, Roberts for voicing our intro. She stars in FX's American Horror Story, Delicate Part 2, airing all new episodes Wednesdays on FX and streaming the next day on Hulu. Here is our bracket. We are halfway through this semifinal round and two teams have punched their ticket. The LSU Tigers and the Cal Bears will be in the finals of this national championship. Well, two more teams get the shot in this second semifinal. Will it be Oklahoma, Florida, Utah, or Alabama? Only two can make it on. Hello, everyone. I am John Roethlisberger, and it's my pleasure to be joined by Olympic gold medalist, one of the most decorated gymnasts in American history, Allie Raisman. Allie, the first semifinal was good, but I think a lot of people have been eyeballing this one thinking it is going to be one for the ages, headlined by the Oklahoma Sooners. I have been looking forward to this competition. Oklahoma is the favorite. They are undefeated, and they are going for a three-peat this year. Talk about the, the prestige of this semifinal. These teams have combined for so many national titles throughout history. The first semifinal, they combined for zero national titles. This one, 24 national titles between these four teams. This one is going to be interesting. Any two of these four teams can make it into the finals. Talk about the most decorated team, the Utah Utes. Let's bring in the third member of our team, Taylor Davis. Taylor? Well, John, Utah's season did begin with some difficulty after the program parted ways with longtime head coach Tom Farden and named assistant coach Carly Dockendorf as head coach. It was an unexpected change, a quick turnaround, and at times overshadowed the gymnastics. But Coach Dockendorf said some elements of this season were taken from them, but this is something that can't be taken away, the opportunity to compete for a national championship. Thank you, Taylor. We got two more teams, and they are formidable as well. The Florida Gators, the Alabama Crimson Tide, and Allie, these two athletes are going to go a long way to determining how those two teams do tonight. Luisa Blanco and Leanne Wong are superstars. They continue to get better and better. So four teams come into this session. Only two teams get the chance to be in the finals. That will be determined over the next two hours. The action starts next. Simultaneously, and we will have a two box up, so you'll get to see every routine. Events will alternate, but at home, you'll get to see every gymnast performing today. Six athletes compete for each team on each event. The lowest score is dropped. That means the top five scores on that event must count towards the team score. If you have a mistake, not the end of the world, you can drop that score. They add them together, and that team with the highest score is the winner. Six judges on an event, too. That is something that is important we'll talk about throughout today's competition. And we got the stream team. There they are, right up having a good time. They are covering every event. You can go to ESPN+. Plus. We got Sam Peshek, Bridget Sloan. They'll be on Vault and Beam while NCAA champion Anastasia Webb and 11-time All-American Kennedy Baker will be doing bars and floor. So make sure you pull up ESPN Plus while you're watching us as well and you catch every bit of action. Oklahoma, the number one team in the country, they're going to start on vault. This is Faith Torres getting things started. Yurchenko, one and a half twist, 
under rotated that under this type of pressure i think she tried too hard to go for that stick it's very common to try so hard to stick and you forget to do the proper technique to get you the amount of height that you need to stick that landing as you mentioned they can drop that score they're gonna they're gonna want to drop that score Allie, but the first gymnast yeah. of the meet in a elimination situation and all we've talked about leading up to this competition dominant ou ou is going to advance and i'm not saying the, the sky is falling but faith torres just had a miss they've got to hit five these teams are going to be super tight and super competitive even the best may be showing some jitters Emily Morgan now for Utah. They had some jitters in the regional round. Barely advanced, but they did. New life here, but they're gonna have to do better than they did in that regional final. Even though this is a big competition, the irony is you just have to do your normal exactly like that. Easier said than done under this amount of pressure. Chloe LeCourcier will lead things off for Alabama on the uneven bars. Chloe is the type of gymnast where you see her dancing and singing right up until the moment that she salutes. She is, yeah, she's a tremendous athlete too. The coaches feel that her positive attitude and her love for the sport is what makes her the right person to start this team off. Gonna do a full in dismount. Great start for Alabama. Chloe's just a freshman and I tell you what, she is gonna be such a huge part of this Alabama team in the next few years has that ability that that determination and that competitiveness and the athletic talent look out fantastic start on beam it is tough event to start on that's going to give them a big boost of confidence Victoria Wynn will start things off for Florida Florida putting up their best score of the entire season in that regional final they hosted it in Gainesville and they looked like a team that said, hey, we want that national title back in Florida. They looked outstanding. Early pressure now for the Oklahoma Sooners. Kira Wells, second gymnast to go. Five scores count. They're gonna wanna drop that Torres, 9-3-2-5. Same vault we just saw, your Chinko one and a half. Great vault for them. I think, Allie, I think the coaches are gonna tell the rest of that lineup, hop forward. Don't try to stick. They, can't, they can afford hops, they can't afford falls. I agree. I think the coaches are gonna tell them, do not think about the stick. My coaches would always tell me to pay attention to the round off. If you do the first part right, the stick will come. Very good start for them. 9.925 for Emily Morgan. Are you kidding me? Anytime you can start with a 9.9 or better for your first gymnast up, especially on beam, you have done something special. Look out for the Utes. Could this be a sign of things to come today? I completely agree. They look confident and calm. Lily Hudson follows LaCourcier's 9.9125. So a couple of huge opening scores here in the semifinal number two. I am impressed with this Utah team on beam. Taking it one skill at a time, being decisive. They look confident. Head coach Ashley Johnston says that Lily is the rock for the team. Another stuck landing. Two routines for Alabama. They did two routines. They could, could not do them better. Execution was great. Landings were perfect. I agree. Excellent start for them. This has been an exciting competition so far. Another great beam routine. I don't know if many athletes would pick to start on balance beam, but they are showing, Utah is showing that they own this event. I would not want to start on beam. I wouldn't want to finish on beam or do it in between. I just, I'll be a three event person. How about that? Ellie Lazari 
the second gymnast for Florida, following a 9.875. So every team starting with a great score except the Sooners. Although Kira Wells went up next and put up a 9-9, so good recovery there. Jordan Bowers now on ball. Oh! Wow! Chanko one and a half, same vault that we've seen. Very uncharacteristic. Absolute it, magician, though, not to go down onto the mat. Impressive the way she was able to save it. My coaches used to say the hardest position in the world is to be number one because all eyes are on you and everybody is watching you. They have all of the pressure on them right now. They just have to relax and do what they do every single day in the gym. No more, no less. Grace McCallum now on the balance beam for Utah. John, down here by the Utah Corral, a lot of conversation about coming out of the gate hot in this one. Like you mentioned, a fall on beam, two falls on bars and regionals. Obviously, they got out of it. But Miley O'Keefe actually told me, we know we can perform well under pressure, but we don't want to have to face that today. They were doing intra-squad squad starting on beam to prepare for this, trying to stay ahead of what is sure to be a very close competition here tonight. Florida starting off so strong on floor. They look calm, they look ready. Their endurance looks great. McKenna Smith, 9.925, a pair of 9.925 for Utah to start this rotation. Oh my goodness. And this is really one of their best events too. So you wanna get those big numbers, certainly everywhere, but your best event, that's where you separate yourself. You can see the score tower on the right hand of your screen as Shania Adams for Alabama mounts the bars. All the scores for every athlete on the teams will be to the right. What you'll notice about Shania is her form and her extension. Judges are looking for handstands on top of the bar like that. Wow. Almost overshot it. Took a lot of arm flexibility and strength to save that impressive fight through that routine. I give her credit for going for that handstand. Sooners troubles continue on vault. Jordan Bowers a 9-4-5. They're gonna count that score. Three gymnasts yet to go. They're outstanding. They can go 9-9 nine, nine to 10, but the pressure has just mounted in ways the Sooners did not expect. This form is exquisite. Oh, this is heartbreaking and devastating. They're all, as an athlete, it's, I know how this feels. They work so hard. They are undefeated. They are the best team. I know how much they want this. I think that they're just too nervous and getting in their head too much. Very, we're not used to seeing this from them, but at the end of the day, they're human. And that's the thing about gymnastics is it's very mental and it's really hard. You said it, Anya Pilgrim now for Florida. On floor exercise, Abby Paulson getting ready to go on balance beam. I'm not sure if the other teams are paying attention to what's happening around the gym, but the prohibited favorite, the team that was gonna be an automatic to advance to the finals. It was about what of the other three were gonna sneak in there. Now, they are in a hole, and they are gonna have a long, hard road to dig out of it. Anya's first pass, that one and a half to double tuck, was beautiful. What I like about Anya is she's got this calm confidence to her. You would never know she's a freshman. Abby on beam fell on that in warm up. Glad to see she was able to make that correction. I've really enjoyed watching Anya this season. I admire her confidence, but she has this calm energy about her that you forget she's competing. She handles the pressure so well. Anya Pilgrim doing what she has done all season long. One of the best freshmen in the country, in my opinion. Another great beam routine. 
The key, in my opinion, to being good on beam is you pretend you are on a straight line on the floor. You don't change anything when you go up on those four inches, and that is exactly what they're doing. Matty Walagora, the fourth gymnast to go here for Alabama on bars, having a solid rotation. Shania Adams, a 985, that's her low score. Hannah Scheibel now. She has never competed after two misses in her entire career at Oklahoma, and she's doing that now. I dare say both of these vaults have got to be great, or Oklahoma may not be able to come back from this. Different vault than we've seen from Pike Path. Very good vault. Maddie, excellent bar routine. The height on her release move. Alabama on fire on bars. Every team is on fire, and there's one team that's burning down in the first rotation. I hate to say it, and it's Oklahoma. They're going to count a score in the 9-4s and a score in the 9-3s on an event. Get a load of this. Number one in the country on this event. This is uncharted territory for the Sooners. Sloan Blakely for the Florida Gators, somebody that really thrives as the season moves on. Tends to kind of feel her way through the middle part and beginning of the season, but when it gets to the postseason, Sloan Blakely, she can perform. Meanwhile, Miley O'Keefe, one of the best ever to mount the balance beam, goes for Utah following a 9.95 from Abby Paulson. A highlight for me watching Sloan on floor is seeing her personality. I love watching her on the other events as well, the intensity, the focus, and the moment she lands it, you get to see her bright, lovely personality. It's a highlight for me. Miley gonna do a difficult connection on beam, side aerial to lay out, step out, gets four tenths bonus for that difficult skill. Got to be a confidence booster to go up on beam after your teammates have hit some of their best routines. One and a half to punch front foot full. These routines take tremendous amount of endurance. Watching her, she doesn't look out of breath, looks so easy for her. By Spring Gator fault, dismount, stuck. Utah can't be better. They've absolutely been lights out. 995 for Abby Paulson. Miley O'Keefe usually outscores Abby Paulson. What do you do? Can we have our, maybe our first 10 alley of these NCAA semifinals? I think she actually wobbled on her side aerial layout step out, but I think it's gonna be a big number. It's interesting because they did struggle in their regional final, but sometimes when you struggle, it allows you to learn from those mistakes. That's kind of the silver lining of it. So an interesting turn of events here for Oklahoma. Audrey Davis not scheduled to go on vault. They're gonna put her in. She does a Yurchenko one and a half, but Allie, they took her out because she always has a leg break on her pre-flight, which is generally a tenth off which makes it a 10-0 start value, almost a 9-9 start value. Head coach KJ Kindler says Audrey Davis is a sure thing. Chanko one and a half. Over rotation, but better than an under rotation for Audrey. A huge step. And if they're applying the code exactly how it should be, that is a two-tenth step. Form break on the pre-flight. The score might be in the 9-7s. This will be low, the lowest Oklahoma vault rotation since, get this, January 4th of 2008, 16 years ago. It's heartbreaking. You know how hard all of these gymnasts work, and, and I'm sure they're devastated, but the meet is not over until it's over. So they have to stay strong, be confident going into the rest of the events, and as my coaches would say, you have to turn the page. Jaylene Gilstrap for Utah now. On balance beam, Danny Ferris, she has been another sensational freshman. This freshman group for Florida, so important for their team. Wow, what a save. Good save on Beam. Missed her foot. That was impressive. That skill was called a wolf turn. 
That four inch mat being pulled out of the floor is not a deduction, it's just for extra safety and protection on the body. Backhand spring, layout two feet. Has to remain the layout position throughout the entire flip, otherwise she could risk getting devalued to a pike. Should be no issue today. Oh! Looks like she missed her front foot. It's hard to spot the beam when you're doing a switch leap like that. It's kind of a fluke thing sometimes. Your foot just slips off. Here's the thing about this Utah beam rotation. <laughs> that doesn't matter. They have got some outstanding scores. In fact, they will have a higher score than they have had the entire season. Good for them. That's this event, well deserved. Even with that fall. Danny finishing up strong on that floor routine. I think for Florida, this is going to be a good confidence booster, a good way to get settled into the competition before they head to vault and then bars and beam. Watch the front leg just totally slipped. Just the beam is only four inches wide. It's very unforgiving. Sometimes you might feel you're perfectly on and your foot just slips. You're at the wrong angle. The star of this Alabama team, Luisa Blanco. The final gymnast here. And we have some individuals competing as well along with the teams. This is Gabby Wilson from Michigan. Gabby's vault was fantastic. Elbow straight on the table. So much amplitude. Luisa is a fierce competitor. Hitting handstands like that, judges allow for a 10 degree window at the top of the bar. Going to do a full in dismount. Legs together, stuck landing. I think Alabama is going to be really happy with that. Assistant, assistant coach Amelia Hundley giving her a hug. Watch this, the toe point, the body position floating from the high bar to the low bar. In the dismount, the knees and toes together. So difficult when you're tired at the end of the routine. Let's go over to balance beam, the individual competing along with Utah, Selena Harris from UCLA in an outstanding, really all around competitor for the Bruins. Just competing here on beam though, UCLA got bumped in the regional, regionals by Arizona State. So Selena here competing as an individual. Leanne Wong, one of the best in the country in the all around, finishing things off for the Florida Gators on floor. What you'll notice about Selena on beam is how fluid she is. She continues to move throughout her dance and her leaps. That's what the judges are looking for. Leanne Wong on floor opening up with a massive double layout. Front toss on beam. This routine has been solid. Selena does a good job continuing to move, but I can see she's taking deep breaths, taking her time. One and a half stick, that's gonna be a big score. Leanne Wong on this floor routine, a 9.9625 to pass Alabama for second. This top three team's gonna be super close after one. Round up, whip half to a punch front full. Leanne Wong has her eyes set on Paris this summer. She is training collegiate and elite gymnastics at the same time while attending school at Florida, and she hopes to be in Paris with Team USA. Another Michigan gymnast competing here as an individual. This is Carly Bauman. She's the team captain here in 2024 part of that 2021 national championship team for the Michigan Wolverines. 
Pay attention to the height on this Jaeger. Connected right into the overshoot. You notice she wasn't in the handstand position. That's okay, because she connected it immediately from the release move on the high bar. Double front dismount, hard landing to spot. Scott Sherman there, congratulating her, longtime coach at Michigan and the bar guru for the Wolverine. Pay attention to the height, the way she finishes her rotation so quickly, so but, high in the air. That's awesome. Connected immediately, horizontally, is over horizontal on that low bar, which is what the judges are looking for. We're gonna see a lot of things that are world-class today, and one of them is coming up on floor exercise, and it's Jade Carey. Amongst the best in the world on floor exercise and vault, in fact, an Olympic gold medalist. Yes, you heard me right, from Tokyo on this event. Double layout with a full twist. There are so few people in the world that can do a tumbling pass like that. Keep in mind too, today, both semifinals combined, the top score on each individual event and the all around will be your NCAA champion. So individual All-American honors as well are decided today. Haley Bryant currently in the lead in the all around with a 39.7125, but Athletes like Jade Carey, certainly that's something that she could accomplish. Great landing. Judges told us when we talked to them, ask yourself, did she want to take a step or did she need to? And she wanted to take a step. That was such a good routine, so controlled on that last tumbling pass. Pay attention to this. We see double layout sometimes, but she adds a full twist to it. And then watch her feet position when she lands. This chest is up, controlled. So not to take away from some of the great gymnastics that we saw in this first rotation, but the headline is about what went wrong. And it's the Oklahoma Sooners on vault, something I think a lot of us never thought we would see, Allie. Yeah, this was devastating. I, I think it's a reminder, no matter what you're ranked, everyone is human. We all feel the emotions. There is so much pressure on them. KJ and Lou Ball, husband and wife, Talking about vault. KJ Kimmler actually began the rotation at the end of the vault runway, John, and about halfway through made her way down to be with the team in the corral. Really unchartered territory. I looked at the athletes, a lot of them very quiet. Eventually they got in a team huddle. Danny Seavers really leading the message saying, hey, if anyone is equipped to come back from this, it is us. But Definitely not a situation the Sooners are used to being in, John. I'll tell you what, something we did not think we were gonna see. We had thought three teams fighting for that second spot. We've got three teams fighting for two. Oklahoma on the outside looking in. We'll learn more about them when we come back. Welcome back to Fort Worth. And yes, you are reading the scorecard correctly. After one rotation, Utah, Alabama, Florida are the top three and Oklahoma sitting in a hole that they have not seen in decades. It is the shocker of the first rotation. There's the most recent and biggest dynasty of our, our recent times. Heartbreaking start for Oklahoma, but as you mentioned, this team is so impressive and what they're doing here tonight doesn't take away from how dominant they've been and how fantastic of competitors they are. This Oklahoma team is something so special. The highest score in NCAA history for the Shooters. 
This year we're all so close, we keep it relaxed and that's when we do our best gymnastics. That's the key to making a great successful team. It's the bond and the friendships that you have outside of gymnastics. You walk into the gym and you see so many trophies in the trophy room. You want to be a part of that. You want to follow the legacy that's been built before you. The back-to-back -back national champs trying to make it a three-peat. To not acknowledge the pressure that exists would be a mistake. So we've been acknowledging it all season. We know um, the challenge that's at hand. Our team is just so good when it comes to like pressure situations, and we know how to compete. A trio of perfect tens for Jordan Bowers. Going out there and doing our best gymnastics will get the job done. Well, surprisingly, with this roster full of stars, Oklahoma has no individual national championships, but in years past has been synonymous with team championships. A testament to the culture that's been established. It's not about the individual success. It's about the team success, and we're best together. It's something they're going to have to carry into the rest of this meet after a difficult start on vault. They head to bars next. Can the Sooners turn it around? We'll be right back. Coverage of the NCAA Championships continues with our Women's Gymnastics Championship final Saturday at 4 Eastern time on ABC. Pre-show begins at 3.30 Eastern time, hosted by our own Taylor Davis, by the way. Don't want to miss that. For more information, go to NCAA.com, your home for all 90 NCAA championships. Meet summary after one. Utah, a season high score on the balance beam, their best event. They lead the way and two missed vaults for Oklahoma puts them in dead last. But we've got what looks like a three team race right now, unless Oklahoma can pull a rabbit out of their hat. We shall see if anybody can do it, it is them. Individual scores from that first rotation, great individual performances. A couple 995s in there, and we will keep an eye on those and see how those hold up for some individual titles. Skylar Drazer here for Florida getting things started on vault. They had a good start as well, that first rotation. Wow. Yurchenko, one and a half. I've seen her stick this vault many times, so happy to see it. She did it here. Danielle Seavers, the first gymnast to go for the Sooners. The Sooners are the number one ranked team on all of their first three events they're competing today. So vault, bars, and beam, they're number one in the country. They're gonna have to show that the rest of the way. And there you go. Could one hit lead to another? They have gotta be lights out. That was impressive by Danny. the way that she was able to handle the pressure. That was just about as good of a bar routine as she could have done. Lily Hudson leading things off for Alabama. Such a reliable starting gymnast on this event. And one of those two that, yeah, first up, but certainly can go 9-9. McKenna Smith feeling the groove here in Dickey's Arena, jam jamming on the sidelines, getting ready to lead things off for Utah. Lily reworked her routine earlier in the season. You saw that front aerial into back handspring. She used to do a layout step out out of it, reworked the routine and added in a switch leap half to be able to get that 10-0 start value. You switch leap, switch leap connected. McKenna's first tumbling pass was good. Slight wobble on the landing. Here's the skill Lily added in, switch leap half. Up one and a half dismount. Great start for Alabama. I talked to assistant coach Justin Sprang from Alabama before the meet. I said, how'd, how'd warm ups go? How's the team feeling? And he said, light years different from yesterday during the training session. They were a little off, struggled a little bit here and there. And he said, it's a different team today. And so far in this competition, they are absolutely that. Victoria Wynn now for Florida, the second gymnast to go. Skylar Drazer, a 9.875 in the leadoff spot. Danielle Sievers for Oklahoma, a 9.9 .9 in the leadoff spot. Huge straddle jump from McKenna. Victoria Dinger, Chanko, one and a half out of a 10.0. Improved this ball 
so much. Judges would prefer to see an over rotation versus an under rotation. Kat Lavasse with the next gymnast to go. Got a smile on her face, but got to wonder how fast that heart is racing underneath there right now, knowing what is ahead of them to try to dig out of this. Maddie Walagora follows Lily Hudson's 9-9. Kat has to take it one skill at a time. Kat looks calm. Gonna do a blindfold, connect it into a double back dismount, gets one tenth bonus for this connection. That's the Oklahoma team that we know. Took the words right out of my mouth. They've gotta be like that the rest of the way. Down 1.1, to put that in perspective, that's three touchdowns and you're already in the second half of the football game. Teams don't come back from that. And what Oklahoma needs to do is they need to eat into that lead a little bit. They might need some help from the other teams, but they've gotta chip away two, three tenths of rotation, try to get it close at the end, and try to make that leap if at all possible. Jaden Rucker now for Utah. Follow McKenna, follows McKenna Smith's 98875. Oh, I was just gonna say, Maddie is so rock solid on this event. Fell on that tough three quarter jump. Gonna be a 5 10 deduction for that on floor as well. Landed short on that full in, a hard pass to do. It's not, it's not uncommon in a big competition like this to see a lot of mistakes because of the pressure. You might think because we're at this big stage that everyone's going to be in their perfect shape. There's no such thing. It's not abnormal to see going out of bounds, falling. So I'm honestly not surprised with what we're seeing right now. Kat Lavasser, 9.95. I just explained how she might, the OU might need help from other teams. Well, they just got a little bit of help from Alabama and Utah. Florida now on fault. Anya Pilgrim follows a 985 from Victoria Wynn. Wow. Just floated in the air. Made that look so easy. Jaden finishing strong for Utah. I love the look Anya Pilgrim has on her face all the time. It's almost like a sheepish grin, like, that was easy. I do that all the time. It's almost like she doesn't know she's Anya Pilgrim and she doesn't realize how good she is at gymnastics. Look at the form in the air, hips open, knew exactly where she was. There it is, there's the grin. Faith Torres now, she let off the vault and that's where things started to go wrong for the Sooners, but things have gotten right here, but they, they have given up all margin for error, have the Sooners gotta be perfect the rest of the way. Ooh. Good start to this bar routine. Double layout dismount. Good routine. Had a little break on that pack salto in her feet and then that small hop. And this is gonna sound crazy. They're gonna wanna drop that. Because they can only count nine nines. Right here was a little bit short. You saw she had to pull her shoulders back and bend her elbows. Sometimes when you're nervous, you hold on a little bit longer. Try to play it safe. Ella Burge is now in a pressure situation for Alabama on beam. Maddie Walagora just a 9.025. This is gymnastics, ladies and gentlemen. It is not over until it's over. Already you're seeing some mistakes from these other teams and that opens the door. This the is, team's hitting. This is a critical spot for Ella right here. She's gonna do a one-arm back handspring, very difficult into a layout step out. <sighs> and just like that, just like that, the tide turns again, no pun intended, but they will count a fall. 
Blink crooked on that layout step out. It's hard to correct yourself when you feel that you're crooked. This is the thing about sports is you can do everything right. You can be so prepared, but when that moment comes, any level of doubt or anything can make things go a different way than you want it to. I can see Ella smiling. She told me that smiling helps her calm down. Almost. And Big mistake there again. Really important not to compound your mistakes because you could still score above that 9025. So she's got it. It's important that she hits well here the rest of the way. Every little tenth makes a difference. So Ella Burgess follows a fall. Unfortunately, she has a fall of her own. Now we go to Utah where they had a fall from Jaden Rucker who scored a 90875. Four gymnasts to go for Utah. This is Abby Paulson. She is a veteran. She's handled big moments many, many times. But now maybe the biggest moment of her career trying to get to the finals are the Utah Utes. A nice front through to round up by can't spring two and a half. Good start. Freshman Danny Ferris getting ready to go on ball. She is a rock star on this event. She absolutely flies. Ball was soft. Florida's landings have been dialed in. I am impressed. Danny Ferris loving it. Gator chomp all the way down the runway. A lot to be happy right now about if you're the Florida Gators. The only team in this competition so far without a major break. One and a half to punch layout, stuck that landing. I like how the layout G threw her arms out, made it look extra floaty. I don't know if floaty is actually a word, but it absolutely describes exactly what you, you wanted to. Extra floaty, that's it, a good thing. I think you made it up. I got it from you. I'll take credit for that. Gabby Gladio on beam now. Following Ella Burgess's 9.05. They're going to have to count that score. Reagan Smith now for Oklahoma on bars. Faith Torres a 9.85. They don't want to count that score. And if anybody can get Sooner Nation fired up, it is Reagan Smith. Reagan doing a pack salto on bars. Reagan has a ton of elite international experience. Helps her in situations like this. Double layout dismount. Gabby has been solid on this event so far. Started off with a huge back handspring layout two feet. Coaching staff from Alabama said they've had a great couple weeks of practice before this championship. Really said they got better the last couple weeks. Good finish, which usually you're just trying to maintain what you've done all season, but they said they've actually improved, got an extra half, tenth, tenth here and there, and that is critically important here in the postseason. Unfortunately, some trouble on beam, but Gabby Gladio gets things right for them. Abby Paulson stops the bleeding, as we like to say, gets a 9.9. Jaylene Gilstrap now. Danny Ferris for Florida put up a 9.85. Leanne Wong, the fifth gymnast to go. Wow, that first tumbling pass on floor, what I liked about it is the second flip was so much higher than the first. Different vault than we've seen, wow. And that is big, because I'll tell you, I, I love Leanne Wong's gymnastics, absolutely one of the best, but that is a vault she rarely sticks, and it's a tough one to stick. Kind of a different vault than we've seen from other people, but man, no doubt about it right there. Impressive. Leanne's vault is hard because she does a round off and a half turn onto the table, so because of that half turn, it's very difficult to time your half turn to get that block off the table.
The newest, biggest moment is Shania Adams on balance beam. Gabby Gladio definitely got things straightened out with that 9.875, but two yet to go. They already are counting a fall, so every wobble, every mistake that potentially these gymnasts make here in the last two, Shania Adams and Luisa Blanco, are going to count on that team score. Wow, triple wolf turn. The type of skill that we see at the elite level Olympic Games. Front aerial. Audrey Davis now, maybe the best bar worker in the country. She absolutely is a clinic on this event and she needs to be right here. 9-9 nine, nine from Reagan Smith. Watch the flexibility and the height on that. Fingertip oh. catch. Another fall off the balance beam. And this is unbelievable. We saw three mistakes from Oklahoma on vault, now three from Alabama on beam. Yeah, gymnastics looks easy. Good dismount from Audrey Davis. Gymnastics looks easy, but people don't understand how mentally hard it is. Dismount round off, one and a half twist. Sometimes when you're on the podium, the beam is actually shakier and bouncier. And it can be really hard to get that right timing. It feels different than it feels in the practice gym. And also these gymnasts are used to having their teammates right next to them on the same level. Here they're higher than them, so they might not be able to hear their teammates while they're going. Ellie Lazari follows the 9.9375 from Leanne Wong. What a rotation for Florida. This one just icing on the cake for the Gators. Meanwhile, over on floor exercise, Miley O'Keefe still trying to erase that 90875 from Jaden Rucker are the Utah Utes. Ellie Lazari fingertips onto that table. I wasn't sure if she got too high on the table, but the timing of that was excellent. What you'll notice about this floor routine is the fun choreography and how much fun Miley has when she performs it. Two eight seven five. They are going to count that along with the nine oh five. Luisa Blanco in desperation mode for Alabama now. They cannot. It might already be too late as far as counting misses, but they absolutely need a huge one here. This is a tough position to be in for Luisa. I'm curious. She does a back handspring layout layout. Very risky. I'm curious if she's going to play it safe and do one layout. Jordan Bowers getting ready to go here on the uneven bar. She is the anchor for the Sooners. Well, John, the nerves have really been palpable down here on the floor this rotation. A fall from Luisa Blanco. This is such unexpected results in the first two rotations. And Allie, you mentioned the mental challenges. I've seen them all handling it different ways, stepping off to the side to be alone, grabbing a teammate to talk. Some have even put on headphones. The intensity of this meet really getting to some of the best athletes in the country. We can feel it up here, honestly. The, the, usually we're having fun. This is as intense of an NCAA, NCAA championship as I have seen. This is incredible. I think Oklahoma's got to be happy with that bar rotation to be able to come back after an upsetting vault rotation to me shows me why they are the undefeated team. 
Luisa finishing up with a round off, one and a half dismount. As shocking as that Oklahoma vault rotation was on that first event, I think this Alabama beam rotation has eclipsed that one with four falls in one rotation. I'm not sure if that's happened in Alabama history, to be honest with you. Wow, Grace McCallum now, the anchor position for Utah. Again, a critical routine there. They're trying to erase a miss. And with a Grace McCallum hit, this will be another outstanding rotation for the Utes. They were in first place coming into the second rotation. Jade Carey, Olympic finalist on this event. Outstanding floor rotation, trying to chase down Haley Bryan for that all-around title. In both boxes, you have two Olympic teammates from the 2020 Olympic Games. Pretty cool. Wow, wow. A Yurchenko double twist, and I said wow, because that is the type of ball that's done at the Olympic Games. And she kicks out of that, like her arms are popping out of that twist, looking at the ground. No one does it quite like Jade Carey. What's impressive is she lifts her shoulders, has the hip rise, takes a beat, and then twists. So she's able to get so much height. Beautiful control on that floor routine in that last pass. Utah looks like a different team than we saw in that regional round of competition through two events. They are outstanding. Despite that Rucker mistake, second up, they erase that with five great scores. Isabella Magnelli now for Kentucky, competing as an individual. Here she is on beam, an event she is exceptional on. Three skills connected in a row gets one tenth bonus for the difficulty of that. Gabby Wilson from Michigan, next to go on bars. She got a 985 on vault in her opening rotation. I watched Gabby in practice yesterday and I was blown away. That release move was caught on her fingertips. I was blown away by how much improvement she has. She looks dialed in, she looks confident. I'm really hoping that she has the competition that she practiced yesterday. Wow. Gotta be happy with that one. Isabella Magnelli as well. Nice performance from her. We talked about the individual champions from Oklahoma or lack thereof, but right now, Audrey Davis leading that bar rotation with a 9.9625. Raina Worley came back for a fifth year, had an outstanding season with the Kentucky Wildcats and helped Kentucky to one of their greatest regular seasons in the history of their program just to have their hearts broken by the Arkansas Razorbacks who denied them their ticket here as a team to these national championships. But Raina Worley, she has been something special. This is her final routine as a collegiate gymnast and she will be missed.
known Raina Worley since she was seven years old. A young gymnast coming out of Virginia Techniques in Christianburg, Virginia. And here she is. What a career it has been for her. Tim Garrison giving her a hug there. He will miss her. She has been a joy to watch, not just for Wildcat Nation, but for gymnastics fans across the country. Watch the control on this first pass. She opens up at the right time. And watch the control on this as well, the layout. She threw her arms out, chest open, helps her control that. What a second rotation it has been. It has been a good one for the Florida Gators and Taylor Davis is with the head coach, Jenny Rowland. Definitely has, John, thank you. Coach, we talk about it often in gymnastics. It can be anyone's day. It's about who stays true to everything they've practiced throughout this season. Through two rotations, how have you seen your team maintain composure in this environment? This team really, our, our vibes, we're just chill. Uh, and you know what, they're, they're doing what they do. We're working really hard to just control our controllables yeah. and be us. Um, you know, take every moment as it is, make the most of it, and you know, keep taking it one step at a time. The Chill Gators, we love to see it. Thanks for the time. Let's go, thank you. Go Gators. Well, the Florida Gators are in a good spot right now. They're in the top two, and they've got a comfortable lead over the Oklahoma Sooners. Here's their ball tally. Watch the height and the way she floats into that landing. Half turn on, spots that landing, doesn't move her feet, so difficult. And then this, what was so good about that was the height of the back handspring onto the table was on her fingertips, allowed her to get so much extension and amplitude off the table. A lot of people didn't know what to expect from the Florida Gators coming into this season. They lost so many potentially big scores from last year. Where would they come from? We're gonna take a look at that when we come back. We got some drama in Fort Worth. Utah, though, no drama there. They're on pace for the highest score in a semifinal or a final of an NCAA championship in history. Florida Gators in second. Oklahoma chipped away a little bit at it. But Alabama, a rough beam rotation puts them in the fourth spot. The Florida Gators lost so many routines last year, Allie, that potentially could score even 10.0s, most notably Trinity Thomas graduating. But they found it in a place very uncommon for a team to replace big scores in their freshmen. Yeah, this has been the year of the freshmen, in my opinion. They have been so instrumental to this team. The consistency, the stuck landings, the form, they've got the whole package. It really has been a year of growth. Each meet was just doing our job. We are very focused on getting 1% better outside the gym and inside the gym. People say that we have a very young team this year with six freshmen coming in. They filled a lot of spots in the lineups, which is amazing. I'm not really sure any of us expected how much we would be doing this year. Perfection from Anya Pilgrim. It's a 10.0. This freshman class truly has been invaluable. This team really can excel and soar when they're just calm, cool, collected, and, you know, having fun. Even with consistent contributions from inexperienced freshmen, Florida is the only team in the country that improved their overall score for eight consecutive weeks of season, a testament to how quickly these young Gators acclimated. When we come back, we'll see what else can happen in this unpredictable regional championship. Bama heads to the floor when we come back. Our 
coaching staff has just brought in this idea of playing gymnastics. As a fifth year, when you hear the term playing gymnastics, it's kind of foreign to you. I would describe it as just having fun and just doing it for the little girl inside of you. This new childlike mentality allows you to enjoy the moments. We start out the day by coming in and we play spike ball for like 30 minutes before just to get our competitive juices flowing. The joy, the fulfillment, the love, that has to come first. These athletes are so talented, they're so capable. The excellence, the gymnastics, that all follows as long as you're prioritizing the right things. A highlight for me is watching Bama in the warm-ups. They play gymnastics, they have so much fun, and I think that's what makes them do better. So I'm hoping they're going to bring that attitude into the floor. I know they've struggled on balance beam, but hopefully floor they're going to be able to let loose, have fun, and play gymnastics. I've been told, in case you're wondering, Lily Hudson is apparently the best spike ball player, but Gabby Gladio is the best defensive spike ball player. So if you're putting together a team, you want a defender, go Gladio. Here is the meet summary after the second rotation. Utah and Florida, they are in the spots you want to be. First and second, and they are there comfortably. Alabama and Oklahoma are the teams counting falls. Alabama, three falls on the balance beam. Oklahoma had to count two on vault. Alabama counting three, rather, they had four. So Florida and Utah, though, Unwavering here halfway through as we look at the individual scores. Jade Carey a 9-9 for that huge vault. And this meet, you know, you've been watching. We've got plenty of misses, which leads to enough drama. But Taylor, apparently you got more for us. <laughs> I've been busy down here, John. So in that last break, KJ Kindler noted that the beam was actually moving. She pulled representatives from the NCAA over. A couple gentlemen uh, actually pulled the mats apart, re-fixated some things to make sure the beam was more stable. Obviously, this interacted with their warm-up time. The judges said they would allow a typical warm-up process for the Sooners. So, not the typical day in any capacity, John. Could this be the moment the momentum changes? It's like the lights going out at the Super Bowl. You come back on the field, and the other team takes the lead. I got to tell you, John, I watched this Oklahoma team warm up on beam. I don't know if I saw one wobble. They were on. Emily Morgan will lead off for the red-hot Utah Utes on vault. Sloan Blakely for the Gators on an even bars. Chanko, one and a half twist, step backwards. Vault is the only event where judges will take an under rotation deduction. She's so gonna get hit on that. That was a big step too. So not a fall and certainly the margin considerable when you're looking at trying to stay in the top two. But as we saw from Oklahoma, you don't want to let one mistake lead to another. Sloan Blakely finishes a strong bar routine. That was a big bar routine, Sloan hit that handstand so well at the end of her routine. Audrey Davis nailed that 9.9625 on bars. That's the high score there. Here she is in the leadoff spot on beam, a spot typically where she is just got ice in her veins. Maddie Walagora will lead off for Alabama on floor exercise. Crucial position for Audrey to be in right now. She's going to do a backhand spring layout step out. Front aerial connects it right into this pretty dance element right here. Maddie opening up with a high front double twist. Audrey proving why Coach Kindler calls her a sure thing. So much trust in Audrey in this position. Smout round off, double twist. I don't think she could have done it better than that. That's what the warm up looks like for Oklahoma on beam. That was huge for them. Oklahoma shaved two tenths off of the margin between them and that second place spot after the last rotation, but it still remained at almost a point. 
I said it was three touchdowns going into that rotation. It's probably still two touchdowns and a field goal. So they've got a lot of work to do, but they are doing what they said they needed to do, start shaving tents. And again, look for another opportunity. Alabama opened the door, they stepped through. Will Florida or Utah? Here's Ella Zervis now on ball. Can't go one and a half. Good vault, stuck it. Good vault is right. Nailed it. I like the way she was able to bend her legs to absorb the landing. Watch the chest position as she lands the squat. Sometimes if the judges feel there's too much of a bent leg, they can take a small deduction. I'm curious if they will. Yeah, it happens fast in real time, obviously. In slow motion, you can see that knee bend, which typically would be a deduction. But overall, a very good vault. Emily Morgan, a 9-8 led off for Utah. Sloan Blakely led off with a 9-8-5. Victoria Wynn now takes to the uneven bars. Victoria warmed up one of the best half pirouettes coming up right here I've ever seen. She finished right in handstand. Ava Siegfeld now for Oklahoma on the Audrey Davis led off with a 9.9625. Allie, you said it was virtually perfect. The judges agreed with you. And that is now the highest score on beam in this competition. Audrey Davis leading two individual events. Well deserved for Audrey. The fell on the back handspring. The fourth, Lay out, step fall, out. the fourth fall in this competition for Oklahoma. I don't think they had four falls combined the entire rest of the season. Cam Machado for Alabama on floor exercise. Maddie Baldagora led off with a 9.8625. Ava doing a good job with the rest of the routine. It's not enjoyable to have to continue to do beam after you know you've made a mistake, but she did a good job finishing strong. Beautiful turns from Machado. Ashley Glenn will be the next vaulter. Ella Zerbis at 9.9125. At this point, Utah just needs to avoid any major mistakes. Just be consistent. Small steps will not change the outcome for them. Major breaks are the only thing they need to avoid. Can't go one and a half. Big step forward. If it's three feet or more, the judges could take up to two tenths on that step. I think they may there. But it was a good vault. Judges would prefer to see over rotation than under rotation. The name of the game is it was a good enough vault. Alabama doing a good job coming back from beam. Jordan Bowers would be the next gymnast on balance beam. Siegfeld fell off the balance beam. 9.2875. So here's the situation for Oklahoma. If they had any chance left of moving into the second spot, they cannot have any major breaks. It was already that situation, but that fall, that can be dropped. They've got four athletes that all can go lights out 995 or better but the margin is gone here on balance beam. Another fall, and this meets over for the Sooners. Ellie Lazari on bars, follows at 9.9125 for Florida. Not given an inch are the Gators. What stands out to me about watching Ellie on bars is her flexibility. Watch her straddle cast handstands. What's unique about Jordan's beam routine is she does about 30 seconds of dance. Oh. 30 seconds of dance before she does any acro series. Ellie put her knees down on that dismount. Might have miscalculated the timing or she was tired at the end of the routine. Takes a lot of endurance. Let go of the bar too early. Needed to hold on longer. Major break from Florida. 
All of these teams now, except for Utah, have had a major break. What does that mean for Florida? They got three gymnasts yet to go. They need three hits. And remember, Oklahoma was just a hair under a point behind the Florida Gators. And if they should count a miss on bars, it's suddenly going to be a new competition. Ella Burgess here on floor exercise for the Crimson Tide. Great routine from Jordan Bowers. It's not easy to go up after you know that you have to hit that routine because you don't want to count a fall. Ella doing a double pike on floor. What I love about this floor routine is Ella told me because of so many injuries, she never thought she'd be able to do a double back on floor. But now she does two of them. So she's really proud of this routine. Here's the second one, double tuck. Ashley Glenn got a 9-8, their second 9-8 for Utah on vault. McKenna Smith, the fourth gymnast here for the Utes. Half on front pike, wow. It's a difficult vault to stick. Amazing day has it been for Utah. A couple of big stuck vaults with two yet to go. They just need one good score out of those last two. And they are in business here after three. Faith Torres gets some last words from KJ Kindler. Jordan Bowers a 9.9375. And that is the story of Oklahoma though. They have six gymnasts on every event that can go well into the nine nines. That's what makes the mistakes they had on vault so shocking. But here's Faith Torres, the fourth gymnast yet to go. They need three big scores. Faith told me that she likes to listen to her teammates when she's competing. It helps calm her down. So hopefully in this moment, instead of worrying about the pressure, she can just listen to her teammates and pretend she's in practice. Very difficult side aerial into layout step out. No issues there. Anya Pilgrim will be the next gymnast for Florida on the uneven bar. She follows Elio Zari's 9.1625. So the first flinch, if you will, from the Gators. Faith finishing a great routine. Anya on bars, important moment for her to get this team back on track. You want Anya in that next spot, though, because she is calm, cool, and collected. You took the words out of my mouth, Allie, which is strange. She's only a freshman, but that's absolutely the gymnast I would want there, too. And look at that. Huge pull-in dismount. Looks so easy for her. Doesn't even look out of breath. Her coach, Owen Field, is way more excited than she is about that routine. Jaden Rucker had some trouble on floor exercise. Trying to get a fifth good score here for Utah on ball. Oh! Ruchenko, one and a half twist. I was watching the table. Looked like she got too high on her back handspring. Wasn't able to get her hands on the table to get enough lift off the table. So not a huge deal for Utah, but they will count a pair of 9-8s, which at one point in time, I thought counting two 9-8s in this competition would be trouble. But with all the mistakes that we've seen, in particular from Alabama and Oklahoma, they will be just fine. Kat Lavasser follows Faith Torres' 9.9625. Number one in the team, number one team in the country is showing why here on this event. Ties Audrey Davis' high score on this event for the number one spot. Luisa Blanco on floor exercise. Luis on floor doing a double tuck. Love the confidence and the way that she performs this routine. What you'll notice on beam is Kat's form. The extension of her knees and her toes. In my opinion, Kat has some of the best form in the world. His layout step out floated into that.
it's a hard balance on beam to remember to keep the fluidity and the rhythm of the beam while also taking it one skill at a time. Luisa on floor, front fold to front layout. Oh, oh! Cat. Wow. Another fall in the beam. And that will just about do it for the Oklahoma Sooners. Hard to know what to say in this moment. I it's devastating. A stunned Sooner Nation. Skyler Drazer now. They are not done, the Florida Gators. Anya Pilgrim in 9.9, .9, another freshman, Drazer. Again, Florida trying to drop that 9.1625. Grace McCallum will be the anchor for Utah on vault. Jaden Rucker just a 9.6125. Skyler has been clutch for this team. She's been so consistent. Grace doing a unique fault that we haven't seen. It's a tough off. Landed over that line. Those white lines are there for a guide, but the judges could take up to two tenths because she landed over the line. So a few small errors from Utah, landing deductions on their vault rotation, but at the end of the day, the name of the game is just don't have a major break, and you have given yourself a chance. In fact, you probably punched your ticket. Lily Hudson, the fifth gymnast follows. Luisa Blanco's 9.9. .9. Good rotation here for the Crimson Tide. Reagan Smith, left hand at the end of your screen, getting some words from KJ Kindler. Again, like she always does. Reagan Smith, 11 10 0s on this event in her career. Not sure a 10 will be enough for Oklahoma the rest of the way. Reagan told me that coach goes through every skill with her, reminds her of her cues. Looked like coach was telling her to take a deep breath and relax. Kat Lavasser, 9.1375. That is her low score. Siegfeld's 9.2875 will be counted. Tumbling pass, double tuck. Reagan back handspring layout. Slight waver there. Reagan is a perfectionist. If she's in the gym and she has a small wobble like that, she will repeat it until she's happy with it. Watch the connection there. That was so good because she didn't stop moving her arms and her body. Leanne Wong, the final gymnast to hear for Florida in this rotation. Obviously, with all of the chaos here tonight, John, I think Coach Jenny Rowland actually put it best. She said, given the talent level in the NCAA, it truly can be anyone's day. She said, there's no offense, there's no defense. It's really a matter of who can stay true to themselves on the biggest stage. It's certainly been in effect tonight. Yeah, Florida just kind of quietly going about their business. Obviously not been perfect, but you just need one hit. Leanne Wong is certainly one of those that'll deliver. Double payout, dismount, beautiful. And I gotta give Reagan Smith credit for going up, hitting that beam routine, being so confident. That was a difficult position to be in. Really shows how mentally tough she was in that moment. Maya Hoot, Minnesota Golden Gopher here on ball. I saw Maya stick this vault cold in practice. Love the way that she rises her hips and slowly twists into the air. It looks so beautiful. Maya has been such a star athlete for the Minnesota Golden Gophers. Outstanding on floor exercise where she's scored many a 
Big Ten champ on vault as well in 23 and 24. Here comes Gabby Gladio, the anchor for Alabama here on this floor rotation. It's been a good one for them. Low score right now, 9.8625. What you'll notice about Gabby is the height that she gets on her tumbling passes. Full in, doesn't need to grab her legs. Gabby Wilson in her third event of the day, competing here in the all around. I spoke to Gabby yesterday after practice, and, and Gabby told me that the Oklahoma team welcomed her into the group with a gift basket. It's not easy coming to nationals as an individual because you're used to competing with your teammates. And being here alone, she said that the Oklahoma team has embraced her, cheering for her as if she's part of the team. On floor, pay attention to this last tumbling pass, the height that Gabby gets on this jump right here. So well controlled, and even gets one-tenth bonus for that split jump at the end. Gabby, a sophomore for the Crimson Tide. And just an amazing athlete, besides being a great gymnast. Nice job there. Gabby now watch Wilson. this. Dismount, double tuck, so much difficulty. We don't see that level of difficulty on dismounts on beam in college. Give her credit and admire the risk she takes in doing that. The Oregon State Beaver now, Jade Carey takes to her third event, the uneven bars, 9-9 nine, nine on vault in the last rotation. Extremely difficult pack. Full twist. We've seen a lot of pack saltos today, but not with that full twist. Full in. I like the way she twisted and flipped fast on that dismount. Jade has really been training an elite training schedule almost exclusively all season and then just competing her college routines on the weekend, which is tough to do, but really trying to make that Olympic team. Impressive. I talked to Jade about it, and she said it's hard to balance both, but she feels that competing in college is helping her improve her elite gymnastics. Sierra Brooks now for Michigan on the floor exercise. Brooks, a graduate student, three-time Big Ten Gymnast of the Year. Head coach Bev Blocky in her 35th season as the head coach of the Michigan Wolverines. Certainly going to miss Sierra Brooks and Gabby Wilson. Routine. I got to tell you, I'm super impressed with these individual athletes from Michigan. They look so prepared, look like they're peaking at the right time with skills like this full in. Difficult. Most gymnasts have to pull to get more rotation. Doesn't even need to grab her legs front through to double tuck. So the top team, the Utah Utes, their head coach, Carly Dockendorf, and our Taylor Davis are together now. Taylor? Thank you, Don. Coach, you just said to me, this is sports. 
You've got the lead through three. What's your message to your team heading into the final rotation tonight? I mean, at this point, we just need to do our normal bar routines and just stay focused from the first routine up to the last routine and just do our, our normal work and we're gonna be okay. Two spots in the championship final remain. If it's your team at the end of this last rotation, what will it mean to the program? It'll, it'll mean a lot. Uh, we've been through a lot this year and um, they've become such strong women and their character is it's showing tonight. And um, it's gonna mean a lot to them and their families and all of our fans that have been there supporting us this entire year. It's certainly been on display. Thank you so much, best of luck. Thank you, go you. <laughs> Utah and Florida at the top right now, but the story has been the number one team in the country, maybe the most dominant regular season team in history. The Oklahoma Sooners are in third and a long, long way from making the finals. Through three rotations, Utah and Florida in the first and second spot respectively. Certainly not a surprise to see one of them in the top two. What we did not expect to see is Oklahoma in third, but not only in third, they are a million miles away from that second spot, Alabama in the fourth spot. Allie, how do you put into words a team that's been so dominant like the Sooners having the trouble they've had? They've counted three falls today. I think people underestimate how hard it is to be undefeated and ranked number one. I think we watch them week after week, we're in awe of them, but we forget that they're human and it is a lot of pressure. It's not easy to go up there knowing that everyone is expecting them to win. Really Utah or, and or Florida are gonna have to count a couple of falls really if Oklahoma wants to get back in this thing. Here's some of the highlights through this competition so far. Chinko one and a half, I think tried too hard to stick that landing. Not used to seeing so many under rotations from Oklahoma on. And on balance beam, Ava back handspring layout step out. That front foot was a little bit crooked, couldn't correct herself. And then Kat Lavasser, this front aerial, that first foot that went down. Weren't exactly highlights, more like low lights. And Someone who's down there in the, um, the belly of the beast where all the emotion <laughs> is taking place. I don't know if I want to be down there, wow. Taylor, but you know, you've got a ringside seat to this. What's going yeah. on? Uh, there's an element of shock in this arena, obviously, down here on the floor. Some teams elated, some teams incredibly disappointed. I asked one of the coaches, how do you keep your athletes focused on the task at hand with so much chaos going on? And they said, at some point, there's not much we can do. Everyone is aware of what is going on and how unprecedented this is. We've got one more rotation coming up. The last two spots for the NCAA Gymnastics Championship final on the line. Through three rotations, Utah in first throughout, wire to wire. It's what's happened behind them where the drama has taken place. Utah, Florida in those top two, Oklahoma third, Alabama fourth. Individual scores from that last rotation, Jay Carey who's still in contention for the all around with that 9.9 .9 on bars. Gabby Wilson having a nice day as well, Sierra Brooks. Impressive 9.95 on floor, not quite enough to get in the top spot there. In this final rotation, Oklahoma, they moved to floor exercise. Their worst event, Allie, they're ranked second on that one. First on all the other events, ranked number two in the nation on floor exercise. Alabama goes to vault, Utah on the uneven bars. Florida Gators go to balance beam. Certainly a big cushion, but is there a big enough cushion if you're going to beam is my question. This rotation is going to be interesting. As you mentioned, ending on beam is not easy. Keep in mind, it's late at night. In fact, head coach Ashley Johnson said she was most concerned about this event right now, competing this late at night on vault. Jameson Sears will lead off this event. 
She can fly. Big your chanko full. The way that her hips open is just stunning for longtime gymnastics fans. This reminds me of the 92 Olympic style gymnastics. The way that she opens her hips, gets that landing, it's beautiful. McKenna Smith will lead things off on bars, an event alley that they've had some trouble recently on this event. In the regional final, this team struggled a lot on bars, and this is an event that they're ending on right now. So I'm sure there's a lot of excitement and adrenaline. They're hoping, of course, to advance to the final, but they've got to stay focused. Skylar Drazer leading off for the Gators on beam. Freshman in the leadoff spot on an event. They are trying to clinch their spot in the NCAA Finals. For the Florida Gators, a lot of people in the country might have thought when this season started, you're crazy. This isn't their year, but here they are. Impressive start for McKenna Smith on bars for Utah. Skyler, one of the gymnasts that has been critical for Florida. Very confident and consistent. Audrey Davis, the lead off here. All Oklahoma can do is perform. Do their best gymnastics. That's the only thing they have control of. And that starts with Audrey Davis. Great start for Florida on beam. Five more routines for Utah. Five more for Florida. They only need four hits and they will advance. Chloe LaCourcier will be the next vaulter for Alabama. Jamison Sears, 9.8 to 1.25. I'm excited to watch Jamison in the next few years. She's a fun gymnast to watch. I am as well. We saw Coach Hunley talking to Chloe. Hunley told me that she asks Chloe anything that's not related to gymnastics, like, what's your dog's name again? That's when she does her best gymnastics, when she's not overthinking. Yurchenko, one and a half. Over-rotated a bit, but good vault for them. Remember that gymnast. She is going to be a fun one to watch for Alabama in the years to come. Audrey Davis has been so important to this Oklahoma team as a leadoff. Hopefully gives this team some confidence going into this last event. McKenna Smith led off bars for Utah with a 9.9125. Skylar Drazer led off beam for Florida with a 9.9. .9. Sloan Blakely for the Gators. Ella Zerbis for Utah. Ella flying from the high bar to the low bar. Sometimes when you're nervous, you hold back a little bit. Ella's doing a good job of going big while also being able to control her skills. Sloan also staying confident on this event, attacking the beam. Zerbis with a hit. Just need three more now for your Utah. The dismount. <laughs> One of the highlights, watching her celebrate after her routines. Sloan Blakely never short on emotion. When she hits, she lets you know it. And she should. That was fantastic. She'll be joined next year by her sister Sky Blakely in Florida. Sky trying to make the 2024 Olympic team this summer in Paris. Danielle Sievers now the second gymnast follows Audrey Davis's 9.8875. Coach Kindler told me that Danny is the last one to leave the gym. Set such a good example for the rest of the team. Karis German on vault for Alabama. Yurchenko full out of a 9.95. Clean vault, clean landing, just half a tenth on that little bounce on the landing.
What's impressive about this choreography is the way that she's dancing. The choreography is tiring, and the fact that she's able to dance like that while also doing big tumbling and big leaps really shows the endurance that she has. One thing about the Sooners, they are not going to go quietly. They're going to just keep bringing it. Anya Pilgrim now on balance beam. What a start here for Florida. I said they needed three more hits. Really, with that margin they have, they do not need to have everyone hit. They've got room for a couple mistakes. Emily Morgan will be the third gymnast following a pair of scores in the 9-9s for Utah as well. On bars, this routine is packed full of difficulty. That full twisting pack salto, same skill that we saw from Jade Carey. Another hit bar routine from Utah. I think Anya. they heard you talk about the mistakes they had at regionals, Allie, and they're like, hey, Allie, watch this, because they are lights out so far through three. Sometimes when you make a mistake at a competition, you can take the silver lining from it and learn from it and grow. And clearly they took what happened at the regional final and are better because of it. And Anya Pilgrim, that routine, I just don't know if you can teach that as a, pre a freshman to have the calm energy that she has I want to ask her what her secret is. Reagan Smith, right hand of your screen for the Sooners, follows a 9-8-8-7-5, a pair of 9-8-8-7-5s for Oklahoma start Lily Hudson. On the left hand of your screen on vault, she's outstanding here. She's been perfect this year on this event. Watch how quickly Lily twists, especially in the second half. Wow, wow. There you go. Reagan does that step kick out of the tumbling pass. It's smart because it's able to cover up if she takes a step out of that landing. The hope is to kind of distract the judges so they don't take off any steps on that landing. Gators next to go. Anya Pilgrim a 9-8-5. Less some unprecedented catastrophe hits the beam podium right now. Florida looks like they will be in the NCAA finals. A noti into backhand spring. Very unique and difficult skill on beam. What I like about this beam routine is it's unique. A turn like that is an inward turn. Most gymnasts turn the other direction. Utah, similar to Florida, would take a monumental collapse at this moment, not to punch their ticket to the Saturday finals. And they've got some veterans in the second half of the lineup. Miley O'Keefe, fifth year senior, 17 time All-American. 2022 NCAA champion on the uneven bars as well. That routine from Victoria was probably the best beam routine I've ever seen her do. These Florida coaches have to be so happy with this rotation so far. Great handstand position from Miley on bars. The dismount in Arabian double front. Luisa Blanco now for Alabama. Follows Lily Hudson's 9-8-8-7-5. You're just joining us, Cat Catastrophe for Alabama on the balance beam, four falls, and that is where really the wind came out of their sails, but a strong finish since then. The one and a half 
That was a good one because I could see on that last half, she had enough time and enough height to open up for that landing. Kat Lavasser now on floor exercise, Reagan Smith, 9.875. Right before her. Tuck full in first pass. You can see the hugs on the left side of the screen. That is a collegiate career for Luisa Blanco. That is her final routine and what a career it has been. One of the best ever Crimson Tide athletes. She's not done though, competing for Columbia in the Summer's, summer's Olympic Games in Paris. Leanne Wong, left hand of your screen has got a chance to win the all around, not just getting her team into the NCAA finals, but she can pass Haley Bryant for the all around title with a 9.9125 and can clinch it with a 9.95. Jade Carey also vying for that crown yet. Pat finishing with a very high straddle jump. And round off, double twist, dismount. Oh. Great routine for Leanne. That I, dismount's gonna cost her just, I don't know. That's gonna cost that, her the all around title, Allie. You oh, don't wanna say it, but so I'll say close. it for you. She sticks that clean. She's probably the all around champ. She turned early, she took that step. It's not gonna be a 9-9, I don't believe. The competition is so tight and so close that it comes down to those little stuck landings. Grace McCallum, fifth gymnast here for Utah on bars. This is just a victory lap of sorts for the last two Utah gymnasts. Gabby Gladio <laughs> on ball. Big time, Yurchenko full. Grace McCallum full and dismount. And they're going to the finals. That is five hit routines for Utah. They didn't even need five and they would be punching their ticket, but they got five. They are going. Been 29 years, Allie. Wow. You weren't even alive then, all right? You, I'm 29 now. There you go. It's an anniversary of sorts. They're gonna celebrate Love your, it. <laughs> your 29th by, it's been 29 years since they've won a title. And now they're giving themselves a chance to do it again. Faith Torres on floor for youth, uh, for Oklahoma, rather, following Kat Lavasser's 9-9. Ellie Lazari follows Leanne Wong's 9-8-8-7-5, so it will not be an all-around title for Wong. Wow, hey, big double, double layout. layout. Oh, oh no. Oh, I hope she's okay. Hopefully, Ellie Lazari is okay. Certainly not gonna speculate on what might be injured, but certainly we'll need her. Hopefully, she is okay and compete in the finals for the Gators. Finishing up with a double tuck dismount. If you just saw this floor rotation from Oklahoma, you would never know what was happening. Ellie Lazari is okay, uh, and she is back on the beam. Wow. Tough. Impressive. And when you fall like that, I have to be honest, as a gymnast, it's also really scary. Sometimes you feel you're dead on the beam, and then you miss the beam like that. It can be really disorienting. It takes a lot of courage for her to get back up and finish this routine. The thing I've noticed about beam, and thankfully I never had to compete it, but the difference between being perfectly on and off is razor thin. It really 
is. And I think sometimes people forget how dangerous gymnastics is because they make it look so easy. But on beam, there really is no room for error if you breathe at the wrong time. Sometimes it makes you go crooked. And what a fabulous job of finishing that routine. Truly. Takes a lot of mental toughness to get back up after that. That was fantastic. Didn't even need to get back up, but love seeing her get back up there and finish. Certainly will build confidence. Oh, oh. Just completely looked like she missed that front foot. When you're crooked like that, even razor thin, as you mentioned, there's nothing you can do about it. Glad to see that she's okay. And missed that foot and came down hard yeah. and fast. Alani Sabato. The anchor for Utah on bars and Sierra Brooks with her final collegiate performance here wow. on vault. <laughs> wow. Like the distance on that vault. Nine eight five from Sabado right here will clinch the team title here wow. in the semifinal. Double Probably layout. gonna get it. Not that winning this matters for a championship, but gotta feel good. Yeah, what a great competition that Utah and Florida has had. I'm impressed with the way that they've been able to handle the consistency. As Taylor mentioned, the other teams are aware of what's going on. So the fact they were able to stay in their own bubble and do their normal gymnastics, good for them. Going to be a huge confidence boost going into the finals. You said it, Florida and Utah, so much talk in the last couple hours about Oklahoma and the, the shock and awe of seeing them have mistakes, but Florida and Utah earned this. They came in and were methodical and hit and just went start to finish and took care of business and sometimes that's all you need to do. Jade Carey on the left hand of your screen, she is still in contention for the all-around championship. A 9.975 will win the all-around. A 9.9625 for the tie. Otherwise, it's Haley Bryant's title. Jordan Bowers on the right hand of your screen, finishing things off for the Oklahoma Sooners. You're watching Floor. Pay attention to Jordan's eyes. Jade on beam is known for her consistency. Great control on that double pike for Jordan. This Oklahoma team should be proud of themselves for finishing this floor rotation well. They did it for themselves, did it for each other. Jay doing switch leap, switch leap half. Difficult combination there. Gets four tenths bonus for that. Just the dismount gainer full. What a good competition. Jade has had really showing off why she's in an Olympian. And she gave herself a chance right here. Is it enough though? 9.975, that's a big number. I didn't see any visible deductions in this routine. I'm curious what the judges are gonna do. Gainer full, stuck dismount. I imagine training the elite skills with so much difficulty has given her more confidence in this competition. Mara Tidar Soli from Missouri. Now talk about another gymnast that could win an event. She is fantastic on the uneven bars. I saw her go 10.0 in Missouri earlier this season. That first skill that she did was actually a mistake. She was supposed to put her legs on the bar right away, had to do an extra cast handstand. Another mistake here. Must be feeling a little bit off. Keep in mind, she's had to wait the entire rotation to go. Probably not warmed up anymore. Did a good job finishing strong. Fantastic gymnast. Part of the Dutch national team. She's from the Netherlands. Certainly not the day that the Oklahoma Sooners were hoping for, Allie. Yeah, very surprising, but that unfortunately that's sports is you never know what's gonna happen. You can be number one undefeated, but 
if you don't have a good competition. Florida Gators, and if you looked across that circle, you saw Trinity Thomas, who's helping coach the Gators this season. She knows all about being in the NCAA Finals, almost got the title last year against the Sooners, and now she'll have a chance to be there with her team as they get another shot here Saturday. Gabby Wilson now on floor exercise, her last collegiate performance. By the way, Jade Carey on balance beam, a 9.95, not enough. Haley Bryant will be your all-around champion. Like so many gymnasts, Gabby Wilson started the sport at age two. I asked her about that, said it's meant everything to her. And here she is in the last moments of her gymnastics career. Definitely an emotional one for her. First tumbling pass, the height that she gets. And let me tell you, in person, it looks even higher. In this last pass, she just drills it to the ground. That's my favorite part of the routine, that dance phase. I'm going to work on that, actually. I got to loosen up my shoulders a little bit. Well, sports has it all. All the emotions wrapped up into one day of competition. For Alabama and Oklahoma, it's the agony of defeat. And for a team that has been dominant, like Oklahoma, certainly a hard pill to swallow. Alabama thought they had a chance, they did. It was not their night, but it is for the Utah Utes and the Florida Gators. They have soared to the NCAA Finals. It is going to absolutely be a fantastic one. 3.30 Eastern time on ABC. The pre-show starts and the big show will be at 4 Eastern. Don't go away, though. We're going to wrap this thing up when we come back. I need a deep breath and some water. Somebody help me out, Allie. And it is final. The Utah Utes and the Florida Gators they advance to Saturday's NCAA final. Oklahoma, the number one team in the nation. Their dream for a three-peat has ended tonight. So there you go. LSU, Cal Bears, Florida Gators, and Utah Utes. Those will be the four teams that will vie for the title on Saturday. Taylor Davis is with the Oklahoma head coach, KJ Kenley. Taylor. Thank you, John. Coach, an unexpected ending to the season for you guys here tonight, but it doesn't take away from what this team has accomplished, setting records throughout the season. What do you want this team to be remembered for? Yeah, it wasn't as we scripted it, but, you know, we've taken great pride in winning, and we're going to take great pride in losing. This was character building yeah. for this team. They fought back hard, and um, it was emotional, and um, I give them all the credit for gutting it out through the whole end of it, and it was tough. It was tough. Not a situation that you're accustomed to being in, but what kind of response were you seeing from your athletes throughout this one? Very emotional response. Yeah. You know, they just, um, they were trying to put everything into it, but at the same time, you know, the emotions, I think, were taking over a little bit. Um, but I'm so proud of the way they bounced back. And this is an incredible team, one of the most consistent teams I have ever coached. Um, and so, you know, we'll just live to flip another day. I'm sure of it. <laughs> live to flip another day. Yeah. And like you said, you've got a roster full of absolute rock star athletes, some of whom do have the opportunity to return. But if they don't, what do you hope they took away from being a part of the Oklahoma gymnastics program? 
I mean, this program is special. It's historic. The traditions are unmatched. I just, I hope that they walk out proud with their, you know, chins up and loving every moment of it, of their experience here. It's been special to watch so far. What will be your message to them when you rejoin them? Yeah, I mean, we talked about finishing on our own terms on floor, and I think they did that, and we'll talk about that. But certainly characters built, like I said, and we'll talk about that because um, th these kind of things can only build you up. 100%. Yeah. You've been amazing to watch all season. Thank you so much for the time. Thanks. Well said. You're going to enjoy the winning. You got to have humility when things don't go your way, most certainly. Allie, that's the nature of gymnastics. It's very unforgiving. Yeah, it really is. I th you can see the devastation on their face. But as Coach Kindler said, I think that they danced their hearts out. They gave everything they had in that floor. And to be able to come back like that, I hope they remember that tonight. They get to put the stickers on the board. I'll tell you what. If they wanted to cut open a vein, head coach of the LSU Tigers and, and head coach of the Cal Bears, Justin Howell, Jay Clark and Justin Cal Howell, they'd be honest and say, I'm okay with Oklahoma not being in the final. Wouldn't you agree? The final is going to be tough. I cannot wait for Saturday to watch it. I'm so curious to see who's going to end up on top. It feels like it is more wide open than anyone thought it would be when the number one team goes down. and. We've got four teams that are hungry and in a spot to bring home the national championship. So any thoughts, Allie, as we go into, you know, LSU's, they're the next highest ranked team, but we had all eyes on Oklahoma to advance. Does, does everybody turn now to LSU and say, hey, that's the team that's gonna win it? Or have we learned our lesson in this competition that, hey, anything can happen? I think we learned our lesson. I think that whoever comes out on top on Saturday is gonna come in, be the most calm, do their normal, which is so much easier said than done, and it's gonna be the team that doesn't have a lot of mistakes. Here are your individual champions, Anna Roberts from Stanford. She gets the vault title. Audrey Davis, she gets a pair. She shares the bar and the beam title. Bars with Leanne Wong. Faith Torres also gets to share that beam title. Aaliyah Finnegan on floor, and Haley Bryant. She's been number one for most of the season. She gets the all-around title. Anya Pilgrim, the star freshman from the Florida Gators, is with Taylor. Thank you so much, John. Anya, your first year, and your team finds themselves in the final four at the NCAA Gymnastics Championship. What got you guys here this season? Gosh, a lot of hard work, <laughs> obviously, and then just building on what we've been doing each week and just improving from that. So clearly it worked. <laughs> the proof is in the pudding, as we like to say. Your freshman year, you haven't just competed. You've consistently competed for this team. How have you acclimated to NCAA gymnastics so quickly? Honestly, after the first meet, I really understood what it was about, and then I could carry what I liked and what I didn't and take it through the rest of the weeks, which worked really well for me. And it's boded well for your team. A championship is on the line. One meet to go. Best of luck. Thank you so much. Feel the city breaking, everybody shaking, and Utah, Florida, LSU, and Cal, they're channeling their inner Bee Gees. They're staying alive, staying alive. They will be in the championship Saturday afternoon over on ABC and the ESPN app for all the action. It starts at 3.30 Eastern time with the pre-show. For Allie Raisman and Taylor Davis, I am John Roethlisberger. Thanks so much for watching. Coming up next, it's SportsCenter. So long from Fort Worth.